we know that girls of color, including Black, uh, Latina, and Indigenous girls, suffer violence at rates much higher uh, than their white counterparts. And when we started talking to girls across the country who had experienced juvenile justice involvement, we were really startled by the fact that so many of them shared these common narratives of experiencing child abuse and family violence in their homes. And so we decided to pull the data. And when we did, we saw that almost everywhere we looked, girls uh, had experienced prior victimization before entering the system. And so when we took these high rates of trauma and looked at them together with the most common offenses for girls, it became very, very clear that they were actually being criminalized for their victimization. And so nationally, some of the more common offenses for girls were things like running away from home, uh, truancy or skipping school, prostitution offenses, as well as substance abuse and dependency. And so all of those should be signs um, and evidence of dealing with or trying to escape situations of trauma. That girls of color are disproportionately victimized by the abuse to prison pipeline. And so through research that we've done, we've primarily focused on Black, Indigenous, and Latina girls um, who are overrepresented at basically every single stage in the process. And so um, when we talk about issues of justice reform and gendered violence and racial justice, we just have to make sure that we aren't leaving our girls behind. Uh, because I think one of the most devastating realities that we've encountered is that girls are keenly aware of the ways in which um, they're suffering. Uh, girls are very aware of the ways in which systems and adults entrusted with their care perceive them, uh, that they're not seen as victims of crime, as uh, survivors of abuse. In many cases, they're robbed of their childhood and innocence and not even see, be, they're not even seen as children.